how you can store your API keys safely in Android applications. Assalamu alaikum friends and welcome back to the channel. Always with you and Sharfiri. If you are new here, make sure to subscribe to the channel for Android related videos, software engineering best practices, and productive tips for developers. Let's get started. So whenever we create Android project, you are thinking on how to store safely this API key. What if a hacker can get to my API key? Well, this is problematic, especially if your API key is involving or hitting a dangerous API. Let's consider, for example, there is a payment API in which you are accessing this API in order to request money, for example, or transfer money. This is really dangerous. But here it comes to the decisions where you should call this API, which is the payment API. Usually in most applications, we call it from the server side. Like what will happen? Your application will contact the server and the server, of course, is safe. So the server can contact the API of the payment, okay? So whenever it's possible, make sure to call your server and the server will do that API call instead of you, okay? But how can I contact the server, okay? So usually here it involves something as authentication as GWT token, for example, with GWT token, providing password and username, you can get such a thing, but, but even a hacker can do this same thing. So this will make your application secure and the server is by default secure since the hacker can do that. The real problem with Android is that the hacker can get the API and can analyze the API. So the first thing, if you are publishing a GitHub repo, for example, and adding your API key, you can do a step to prevent displaying this API key in your public GitHub repo. You can do that like the following. The idea is that you will go here to the local properties or you can make a file but you can ignore it in Git. This is ignored in Git, of course. So here you can create a field called API key, all right? And then when building the APK, we will get that file and put it in the, in, in the app. But in some form or another, this will be involved in the app, right? The hacker can analyze, for example, they can do something called dynamic, uh, dynamic attacks, right? They can analyze the packet going from your app, for example. They can do a bunch of things. They can simulate stuff, do injection in your code in order to see that API key. So the idea is to make it harder for them. So first, let's complete this GitHub stuff. You do it here or you can create another properties file and you can do it. Then you go to your build.gradle file. And here we are going to read that file. And after reading the file, we are going to create a field that is created at build time that we can access in our Android app. So first you need to get a file. You go, you go to the root project and here you get the file. Our file is called local.properties. You can put it directly here. This is local properties. Then we create an object that is called properties that will read that file, okay? So it will be properties, it will be simple properties. This one is coming from the Java util, this one. Okay, there is problem, make sure to import it there here, like the following, like the following. Then from properties, you can load this file. You can do it immediately. You need to use those input file input stream, like the following and pass the file, okay? Up until this point, properties have all the things you need. Then here we create a build field config, build config field, right? This will be a string. And then how it is going to be called from our code, which is I'm going to call it API key safe. And the last thing, which is what is the actual value, we can get it from this property you have created, right? So you can do it like the following properties and we then get property and we pass the API key. This API key is this name. Now make sure also to have this build config feature enabled and then do the sync. After syncing, just compile your application. Just make your application from here. And once you have that, go to any place. And there you go, you have something called build config, this one. And then you can simply get something called API keys. Then you can use it. But here you can see this is a specific file that is containing our thing. Okay, so you need just to make sure this is generated, of course, but even with that, it's impossible to be 100% safe. So we need just to make it harder for the attacker to do it. Another thing you need to do, and you need to make sure to do it whenever you are publishing your application, you have to do obfuscation. So here, every time, whenever you are in release, just turn this to true in order to prevent reverse engineering, like, like in some cases, like professional hackers can do that, can access your application, can do the reading, can do the analysis and search for your API key if it is that important. That's why if it is that important, please don't use it in Android. There is other stuff like, for example, native with NDK, C++, you store it there and then you read it in the Android, but it's still the same thing. At the moment of the runtime, your application will use the actual thing and call the server. 
right? So at that moment, the attacker can inject some code to get the value because they have your APK. So make sure to understand this clearly. So this is a couple of devices related to how you saw your API key. In the GitHub or version control system, you can store them like that. So they are a little bit safe. And of course, it is, if it is that important, like for example, if it is payment stuff, you can put it there in the server. Actually, there is another API keys, for example, like Google Map API keys. Like with Google Map API keys or also Firebase, right? They are doing something different. They are doing something called restricting API keys. So the API keys will be there, but it is hard to find, right? But also what we are doing is that identifying that key for certain applications, right? So not everyone with that key can use it to call the backend. For example, Google Map, right? We store it simply in XML files or other stuff, but what we do on Google Cloud when you are configuring the Google Map is that we do some kind of restriction. We tell it what is the package name, which is this one, what is the SHA-256, for example, which is the signature of your application, so, so that when the backend receives an API call, he will identify that it is your application that is doing things. Even if someone steals it, they can't do much with it. And of course, there are other API keys, such as, for example, Weather API, for example, or Exchange Rate API in this course we are making here in this application. I'm doing just a demonstration here. So sometimes this has some quota stuff, so the hacker might take your API key and use it in order to make calls, but what should happen? If you are using the free, they will get nothing because certain APIs like that don't provide that custom customization. What you can do is something else. You can create your server and put the API key in your server. And then at the moment of creating the app for the first time, you can call your server to give you the API key, right? And here you can do that customization by knowing which app is calling. Right? And then you can store it by doing some cryptography in your, for example, key store shared preference in a cryptographic way. But at the moment that the app is running, right, it will use the API key to call the actual server. At that moment, there are some kind of attacks that will get that API key at the moment of running. But this is, of course, a little bit hard. But by doing this kind of practices, you will make it much, much harder for the attackers. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this video. Before concluding, I'm actually building a big comprehensive course about Android security. If you want to get notified about its release, make sure to join the waiting list for the course. This is really a big course for everything you need to know about how to create secure Android application. So make sure to subscribe. The link is security.sharfayunis.com. I will put the link in the description. So that's it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching this video to the end. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and also subscribe to the mailing list. Thank you very much and see you in the next videos. Salam alaikum.